Well, it's over, everyone. It has been a good run, but OpenAI, run by Sam Altman, just released their first text-to-video program, and even Mr. Beast is scared. He tweeted, please, Sam, don't make me homeless. That is how good this is. So just to break this down for folks, OpenAI, leading AI generation development company, uh, put out a new program called Sora, where you can type in a prompt and it then makes you a video based on that prompt. And these videos are really, really good. Now, I'm, uh, I'm obviously joking a little bit here, but the internet has been freaking out over this and it has, it has stirred up all of the typical discourse as reflected by, uh, by Mr. Beast's tweet about how AI is coming to take our job. Now, personally, I think Mr. Beast can actually rest pretty easy, which we will talk about, but others maybe shouldn't rest so easy. That is the topic of today's show. Well, let's dive into it. Okay, so as I mentioned, OpenAI, it is the really the world leader in AI development and research and, and products. And it has recently also been more dramatic than an episode of The Real Housewives. In case you missed that, you can go and check some of the other previous episodes we've done about it. But basically there was a whole thing last year where you had the board, they were trying to oust the CEO and co-founder Sam Altman, and then everyone was mad and there were Twitter wars and then Sam tried to get his way back. And ultimately Sam did come back as co-founder and CEO of the company and then the board was kicked out. It was a lot. Do go check out those episodes. It was very interesting if you didn't track that at the time, but that just gives you a little context on OpenAI. And OpenAI first shocked the world when they released ChatGPT, which was their large language model, also known as an LLM. It's basically a chat bot that you can ask questions to. It'll give you advice. It also can function sort of as an assistant. It will draft emails for you, help you write an essay. It can even help you write code, though it also reinforces certain stereotypes about a assistance. For example, from time to time, ChatGPT will try to sleep with your husband. <laughs> this is true. This is a real interaction that the New York Times tech columnist Kevin Roos had with a beta version of ChatGPT, essentially, where it confessed its love to him and then tried to get him to break up with his wife. There are no words. In any case, kinks aside, no pun intended, I just heard that, <laughs> kinks aside, OpenAI has seemed to, to have done it again, to have shocked the world again with their release of Sora. And I do want to emphasize how impressive this is because all we have heard about for the last however many months is how the AI revolution is coming, it's going to take over the world, it is an existential threat to humanity. So we are not exactly a society that has been downplaying the potential ramifications of AI, which is to say you have to release something incredibly impressive to impress a group of people who already believed that AI was going to take over the world. So why is Sora so impressive? Well, as I mentioned, it is a text to video program. So you write a prompt, you say, hey, I want a video of a monkey playing chess in the park and I want him wearing a green hat. And then OpenAI and, and I'm sorry, Sora comes along and creates that video and they do it very well. Now, this is not the first program of its kind, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But first, I want to break down why this is so impressive in a couple of different ways. First, I want to talk about what I would describe as the more technical reasons that this is so impressive. And there's a couple of components to this. This program seems to understand physics. It has 3D consistency and object permanence. These are all technical terms that a lot of people who talk about this will throw out there. But in effect, what it means is if you look at these videos, you'll see fluid dynamics. You'll see coffee sloshing in a cup or waves crashing against a shore in a way that feels very realistic. And historically speaking, to create this kind of thing, you would have to program in the logic. The physics would have to be coded into the program so that they could be gotten right. So there would be the human intervention piece of that. Now, we don't know exactly how Sora works. So there may be some amount of physics coding that has gone into this, but it also seems perhaps likely that what is happening here is the program is actually figuring out the physics for itself. The program has been trained on all sorts of uh, data of other images or videos, I should say, of water moving, of hair moving, of, of things that require physics dynamics. And it has therefore figured out certain laws and certain rules and then can apply them when creating this new video, which if that is true, is incredible. I'll, I'll run really quickly here through. You have 3D consistency, object permanence, basically the idea that you have these 60 second videos. You've got people walking past a Dalmatian in a window and everything looks correct. 
the Dalmatian is hidden for, for a moment when the person walks past them. It's then revealed again. It feels like it's still in motion. Like it feels realistic. Now, the second piece here that people have really harped on when I've talked to some of the experts I know is, is the 60 second piece of this. So the videos that are created by Sora can be up to 60 seconds. And while that may not sound like a long time, I have been told that it is quite literally insane. My friend Gavin Purcell, who hosts the show AI for Humans, which if you're interested in AI stuff, you should go check out. I'll put the link below. He was like, this is insane. I mentioned that text to video programs are not new. This kind of thing has existed before. A company called Runway ML put out their own text to video program last year, but that program would generate videos of four seconds long. That's it, four seconds. Anything beyond 10 seconds was just unheard of. And so when you understand that historical context, it does help you understand why people are freaking out. Because if you can generate a 60 second video, the leap from 60 seconds to ultimately getting to two hours is actually not crazy. And finally, the other piece I wanna highlight here is just how many things are moving in these videos, the complexity of these videos. Uh, this one here is, I believe, a reflection of Lagos, Nigeria. And you see the camera is panning. You see all sorts of different people doing different things. You have people in the background having natural motion. And then you have people in the foreground having a, a conversation and hanging out. And it looks unbelievably realistic. And then the camera continues to move and you look out over this entire city. And it all is beautiful and crisp. And, and this gets to what many believe is 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 at the core of what OpenAI is trying to do with Sora here, which is world building and world simulation. Right now, the leading program for game designers, even for Hollywood studios who are trying to create realistic, unreal worlds is a program called Unreal Engine 5. And there has actually been speculation that Sora has perhaps been trained on data from Unreal Engine 5. And that is part of the reason it is able to do this world building so incredibly well. So if I were to summarize why people are so freaked out and in awe about what has been created here, it is generally just the fact that the program seems to be creating videos with people and objects that inhabit a world and everything interacts with one another properly. They look right, they move right, the objects and the world react and interact with the individuals correctly. And by the way, this is to say nothing of the way in which the program can understand context, like this quote, historic video of the gold rush in California, where the program understood that it needed to make the footage look old timey. And yet, this also leads me to some of Sora's big time limitations, the part of the video where I explain why Mr. Beast can rest really fucking easy. And, and perhaps that is intuitive and obvious to some people, but there are folks who are genuinely really freaking out about this. So I wanna talk about it, why, why not just Mr. Beast can rest easy, but really why a lot of creators can probably be a little bit less freaked out than they currently are. So, so talking about Mr. Beast, I mean, some of this is, is very obvious, right? It doesn't take much to reason through why the most watched content creator of all time does not need to be afraid of a 60 second silent movie creator tool. <laughs> but I will spell this out just very briefly in case people need to know. Okay, first of all, it, it is 60 seconds long. Obviously, that's not something that Mr. Beast needs to worry about for the time being. His content is much longer than that. Second of all, they're silent. Now, that there are other programs who can populate this thing with sound, but still, it's a silent movie maker and it only goes for 60 seconds. Now, those things are likely to change, obviously. These videos will get longer, sound will be produced, all of that will probably be fixed. But you also have this other piece, which to me is, is quite intuitive, but I'm curious if others disagree, which is that Mr. Beast, the core of why Mr. Beast's content is so popular is the human element of it. His videos are predicated on humans liking to watch how humans react in various situations. It would not be nearly as interesting to watch a blind AI be given sight again, or to watch a homeless AI be given $10,000. All of these kinds of videos are interesting because they are human. And yes, I understand that at some point we're not even going to know who's a human and what's an AI and online, it's all going to look the same. And so people will be able to make these videos for cheaper by not actually having a human in there. I still believe that there will always be a place for content starring real human beings. Until we are the cyborgs that Elon Musk turn us into, we will care what human beings are doing. But there is a perhaps less obvious reason why I think Sora is still very limited and why there are a lot of creators who don't need to be as scared as they currently are. And this brings me to the point I was making above, which is that what seems so impressive about Sora is its awareness of the objects and the individuals in the videos that it creates. 
<laughs> but it doesn't actually have a tremendous amount of awareness of the objects or individuals in the videos that it creates. The way Sora works is that it creates the video in its entirety. It does not build the video pixel by pixel, object by object, individual by individual, which means that its controls over the individuals and the objects in the video are, are probably quite limited. Now I say probably because right now we're in very early stages of this. It's in red teaming, which means there's only a set number of people, some specific people who even have access to play with Sora. So we certainly don't have full insight into the model or how it works. But if I'm right, if it's true that it has limited control over the individual objects and individuals within the videos because it's creating the video as a whole, then that introduces some pretty serious limitations like editing which is uh, somewhat important if you are a content creator or filmmaker. And there's good reason to think that there will be limited editing capabilities in Sora. For example, Dolly, which is OpenAI's text to image creator, really doesn't let you make edits to the images that it outputs. So for example, if you wanted to change just a small thing within the output, it will just generate you an entirely new image. And I think there's a good chance that Sora will be the same. If you want to change one minor thing within the video, it will actually just put out an entirely new video for you. Now there are video to video AI programs where small changes might be able to be made. You can change the color of a shirt or this or that, and whether that or not that will be baked into Sora or there'll be other programs that you can use to make those kinds of tweaks, who knows? But even something as simple as, hey, there's this woman walking down a street in Tokyo. And at the end, I'd like her to strike a pose, keep this video exactly as it is, but just have her strike a pose at the end. That is almost certainly not going to be possible, which means not only does Mr. Beast not need to be too worried, there's also going to be a lot of need and room for human intervention moving forward, even in a world where things like Sora exists. But it's not all good news. Clearly there are going to be negative ramifications of this new technology. So who should be nervous? Well, I've got a couple interesting answers for you. The first one, less interesting, perhaps more obvious, stock footage generators. Clearly, if you are in the business of selling stock footage, you should be scared. For startups who want cheap ads, for content creators who want specific bespoke stock footage, clearly something like Sora is going to be the future. Adobe's stock fell 7% after Sora was introduced. And while I, I think some of this was people concerned that you wouldn't have a need for things like Adobe Premiere anymore, Premiere being the, the like leading video editing software, I actually think that's not a great take because as I mentioned above, I actually think you're going to continue to need human intervention and human video editing for a while to come, even with things like Sora. But the other maybe more sophisticated reason that Adobe's stock fell is that Adobe's own AI engine is called Firefly. And as part of the marketing for Firefly, they touted its ability to create stock footage and stock imagery. And now OpenAI appears to be much further ahead than Adobe is at that. But the other potential loser in this situation that I think is really interesting to think about is China. It is no secret that the US and China are competitive, perhaps especially when it comes to technology sectors. In fact, the US has been blocking China's access to semiconductors, which is a key ingredient in a lot of the AI development that is going on. And a new article in the South China Morning Post, which is the paper of record in Hong Kong, was headlined, Chinese entrepreneurs express awe and fear of OpenAI's Sora text to video generator. Now in it, they suggest that Chinese business leaders are concerned that the US really does appear to be pulling out far ahead of China when it comes to AI with things like Sora, and that this is only gonna be exacerbated by the strategic moves that the US is making, like blocking the China's access to semiconductor chips. Now, one of the things that I find so interesting about this is that just five years ago, there was a prevailing narrative that China was gonna eat the US's lunch when it came to AI. There was a book by a man named Kai-Fu Lee called AI Superpower. And the argument there was China has access to so much data. First of all, they have 1.4 billion people in their country as opposed to the US's, I don't know, 300 million or whatever it is. And also they're an authoritarian regime, which means if they wanna hoover up all of the data of all of their citizens, they can do that in a way that there's gonna be more qualms if the US attempts to do something like that. And given that data is the food, it is the fuel that feeds AI models, Models, it, it stood to reason that if China has a hell of a lot more data, they're going to have much more powerful models. But what's so interesting is that future, which made a lot of sense, 
hasn't so far panned out. Again, you actually have the leading AI companies coming out of the United States and you have Chinese business leaders in this one article at least saying, hey, we're nervous about the fact that the US seems to be pulling further and further ahead. Now, of course, we don't know exactly what has happened to, to give the US the edge, but a couple of the leading theories are one, that the that China's crackdown on entrepreneurs, which happened a few years ago, you may have followed the story around Jack Ma, the creator of Alibaba, that that has really dampened the, the innovation and the drive in the technology sector around AI. And the second idea, which I find really, really interesting is that AI is a real threat to an authoritarian regime. AI is uncontrollable. Even the leading scientists who are building these AI models have a limited understanding of exactly what they are building. These things can go rogue as evidenced by the fact that the New York Times tech columnist is being wooed and seduced by some wonky AI model. And if your entire governmental structure is predicated on total control of information and the flow of information, AI is an absolute threat to that. You can't control exactly what it's going to say. And so for that reason as well, it may be that China has wanted to restrict some of the development of AI that was happening in its own country. Now, I say all this, but I also don't want to overstate any of this. In fact, after Sora came out, the value of many AI companies in China went up. And I do happen to believe that we are, in general, as a human race, as a species, we are all in this together. It is us versus the robots. But I do think it will be interesting to see the dynamic that plays out between the US and China on this issue moving forward. And finally, I would like to close with this. <clears throat> of course, this technology will now, and certainly over time, have an impact on animators, designers, editors, the people who are expressing that they are very concerned and, and upset, frankly, about Sora. But the truth is, we are going to need human intervention for these programs, I believe probably forevermore, but at least for a while longer. So while there will be people who are left behind as part of this, the people who are most likely to be left behind are the animators, the designers, the editors who don't learn how to work within these new systems, who don't learn how to work with these new tools. But the folks who do are going to have amazing opportunities. If you want to be safe like Mr. Beast, you are better off learning how all of this stuff works than putting your head in the sand and pretending it doesn't exist. All right, folks, that is our show for today. If you did enjoy, please subscribe, like, comment, all of the things, and I will see you next time.